with another football season upon us that also means a new Madden to get our hands on. With the new additions of the locomotion system and upgrades to popular modes, will Madden once again face criticism for being lazy and basically releasing Madden 18.5, or will Madden 19 truly be a game of its own? Let's find out. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. When entering an offline game, we're greeted by the new host, Jonathan Coachman, also known to many WWE fans as the coach. After his brief appearance, he makes you feel a bit disappointed that he's not in the game more often as he replaces Larry Ridley inside the studio. Watching the rest of the pregame festivities, while I respect them for trying to have their own thing as far as broadcast packages go, you see fast from other EA titles just how much an ESPN presentation can boost a sports game. From the scoreboard to just seeing stats, it's easy to realize how far broadcast visuals go when it comes to in-game immersion. The coach then makes another appearance in the all-new halftime show. Now I liked it way more than I should have at first glance, because it is pretty bare at the moment, but it does lay a nice foundation to build upon in the future. But still, a game that came out more than a decade ago should not still be the gold standard of halftime shows. Yet here we are. As far as the main two, Brandon Gauda and Charles Davis go, they really don't improve upon their men's 17 and 18 performances. Gauda more so than Davis, as he really misses the mark on huge game-turning plays with the level of excitement he displays. Rolling to his right. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. But like last year, men's announced team's true value will come via the updated lines we hear throughout the season. First thing I want to mention are the QB pre-play signatures, which add a nice touch of realism to the game. But after the first three or four times you see it, you really wish your guy would just hurry up so you can snap the ball. Now regarding passing, it's largely the same. On the highest skill level, all Madden, there's an adequate number of inaccurate passes where even the best at a certain type of throw can be way off target if the ball is thrown too fast or his feet aren't set. This happens less the lower the difficulty is set. High passes to receivers are a bit overpowered, especially in the end zone. Issues also arise when the locomotion system takes over on yards after catch situations and cause you to turn into a mess. You usually just end up overcorrecting yourself directly into a hit stick. The run game will definitely be the most difficult to master in Mad 19 at the beginning. While I can tell the difference between a Garrett Blunt and Tavon Austin, there's a steep learning curve just to avoid having your back not run like he's in quicksand and avoiding the herky-jerky motions that can sometimes arise when you lose control of your player in the open field. First, the game forces you to unlearn years of muscle memory of holding the acceleration button as soon as you get the ball. That is, if you aspire to have any chance of a functional run game this year. Then there's the process of not getting into the open field and moving the left stick incorrectly, allowing the locomotion system to completely take over, and would you look at that? You're rocking back and forth now. A frustrating problem is that even when holes are there to run through, unless it's directly in front of you, it's a chore to get to them as it seems your running back can never get there fast enough and is always tackled before reaching it quite often. Running in a straight line at a decent speed will be a win for many gamers starting out, as there will be so much wasted motion in the beginning and even middle portions by those who haven't mastered the locomotion system yet. Now, if you can consistently get your running back to run like a normal person, the one-cut mechanic is a nice addition, as I've pulled off some nice moves on defenders. One-cut has placed itself nicely next to the juke, and spin is one of my go-to open field moves. I've also found the push the pile mechanic to be effective on short yardage runs when I'm clearly about to get stuffed. And hit the hole? Well, that'll easily be the most forgotten of the three. And don't worry, momentum running and tackling is alive and well as I've seen backs punished for losing momentum with some eraser type hit sticks, as well as smaller-ish backs drive defenders straight into the end zone all because he had the angle and speed. For zone defense, the defenders' reactions to receivers and how they defend the ball, specifically on non-deep balls, have been a highlight for me so far. 
On the highest difficulty, plenty of defenders seem to be alert about balls in their direction. Despite that, there's still a good amount of dropped interceptions even when the ball is thrown directly at a defender. Also, the trials and tribulations of controlling a player with real player motion isn't as noticeable on defense as it is on offense if you aren't being aggressive with the stick in any direction. This gives user defense about the same learning curve as previous Maddens. There's a good mix of runs being blown up and times where the defensive line gets completely stoned and leaves a huge hole to run through. Instant block sheds are reserved for the good run defenders and the weak blockers will get exposed like they should. Unfortunately, there's more general issues like inexcusable blown coverages specifically from cover 4 where my safety would flat out ignore the streaking slot receiver to go cover to somebody else. Or there's the issue that pops up every Madden where the defender won't acknowledge the ball on the ground. But my most pressing problem is the abnormal amount of midair snags on interceptions and fumbles that a lot of the time pops straight up into the air. Whenever new technology is implemented, the chances of seeing some off the wall stuff are high, and Madden's no different. I've already given up a game deciding touchdown because my player decided to bounce right off a receiver who's in the process of breaking a tackle. And while I must say that the hit stick animations bring me back to the days of when Ray Lewis graced the cover and hit stick was your tackle button, the rate at which any and everybody seems to be able to lay some bone crushing hits is at an all time high. And it's not just the frequency that bothers me, as I've had instances where defenders even hit stick running backs forward because apparently everybody on defense has 99 strength now. You need me too? I'm ready. Maybe. Next week. Hey. The mode offerings in Madden 19 are pretty straightforward as we have Play Now, Franchise, Ultimate Team, and Long Shot. Franchise mode hasn't gotten a massive overhaul, but there are some noticeable changes. When you enter into the main hub, you're now greeted by your head coach in his office as you witness a loop of him doing coach things like using his iPad, pacing around his office, and talking on the phone. Other cosmetic changes include having the team schedule sprout across the top of your screen, which is a nice addition as it saved me four clicks to the right with my controller. The most hyped and actually useful addition to the mode was the new way to develop players with the archetype progression system. Each position now has two to four archetypes that players can be labeled as, and that's what they'll be at their highest overall. Now the cool thing is through gaining XP, you'll be able to gain skill points which allow you to bump a player up a whole overall point in any of the archetypes and the ratings that are most important to that archetype. What I love about this progression system is it's random as to what ratings go up when you upgrade. Nelson Aguilar might get plus two to his short route running and plus two to his catch and traffic to go up to an 86, yet instead he gets three short route running and maybe one awareness to go up to an 87. And player archetypes that match the coach's scheme get bonus training points. So this is a nice way to reward guys who actually follow their scheme fits by getting the players that match it. Upon finishing a few seasons and comparing the sim stats, I've realized there is still some work to do, especially when it comes to the passing numbers. While the yards, or at least yards per game, for all quarterbacks are fair, the QB ratings are way too high, as I counted 11 reaching a 100 or better quarterback rating in my final sim, while only 5 reached 100 in real life. And apparently, everybody is a 30 touchdown passer, despite there being very few in the real world. This then obviously boosts the touchdown totals of the receivers as a result. And the receiving numbers, despite the high touchdowns across the board, left a lot to be desired as the league leader rarely hit 100 catches. In my final sim, Julio Jones caught just 94 when 5 players caught 100 or more passes this past season. The amount of interceptions teams get in simulations is absolutely criminal. The Buccaneers leading the pack at 17 would have placed 9th in the NFL last year, despite the passing attempts by quarterbacks being on par with real life. For a simulation accurate stat guy like myself, that's completely unacceptable. Now in the offseason, I'm glad to see young studs only hit free agency if the overalls of his position are high enough to justify him bolting, regardless of age. It's nice when you know the only reason Trevor Williams hits free agency is because the Chargers have three other 80 plus rated corners on the team, and Dante Fowler in Jacksonville, well he was blocked by Calais Campbell. And another one of the more underrated features is the ability to create draft classes in Madden 19. This will add a lot more depth to both offline and online franchise modes, along with adding to an NFL draft presentation that is stepping up and going in the right direction. Madden Ultimate Team has received some welcome additions like now streamlining the upgrade player process 
by having everything doable on the player card. There's also the genius move of allowing us to earn the ability to upgrade players by quick selling items instead of a small amount of tokens like last year. Adding a solo battles mode gives players who favor playing the computer a way to earn cards and coins. Oh, and contracts? Well, those are now a thing of the past. It's safe to say that Mutt is more enjoyable than ever before. Lastly, Longshot returns with the next chapter known as Longshot Homecoming. Devin Wade and Colt Cruz return as Homecoming starts with a nice little intro with Good Morning Football discussing our main character Wade in training camp. The messed up part is that they start you out on the Dallas Cowboys. While I wish it would have carried over the team you ended up on last year, having the Cowboys be the default is a flagrant foul in my book. And while the story isn't something you haven't seen on an episode of Friday Night Lights before, with the inclusion of more gameplay and the decent voice actors, Homecoming is an acceptable alternative to the regular Madden game. No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. In the end, Madden's Pride and Joy Ultimate Team has received the most impactful upgrades, while the franchise mode fan base will still feel as if Madden is still a solid two or three steps behind as they look over at other sports franchise modes. For as much hype as the new mechanics and locomotion system have received, Madden 19 doesn't offer anything truly game-changing to the consumer, even though solid foundations have been built. Aside from the locomotion upping the difficulty to the run game, the average gamer will have a largely similar gameplay experience as last year. For more great Madden 19 content, be sure to subscribe to Sports Gamers Online, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified every time a new video goes live.